Hello everyone and welcome to the Millimeter Wave Innovations session on automated EM circuit co-simulation with RF Pro in ADS. And here's my agenda. First, I want to briefly comment on the RF and microwave industry trend that relates to the explosive need for EM simulation by RF and microwave circuit designers. Then I will introduce to you RF Pro in ADS, followed by five short demos as you see here. So let's get started. The industry trend in RF and microwave design are driven by consumer demand for more functionality in smaller size and at increasingly higher application frequency bands with broadband modulated RF signals. And this translates into denser and denser integration of complex RFICs, mimics, passives, filters, packages, and antennas at higher frequencies. This also means that the design of these RF and microwave components and integrated modules are becoming more challenging because circuit simulation must certainly be combined with 3D EM simulation to account for parasitic and coupling effects of these complex multi-technology integrated structures. As you see here, we are now witnessing 5G technology which is operating in the 28 GHz millimeter wave band. Now, other upcoming high volume and high revenue applications are in the automotive radars and wireless networking application that work at much higher frequencies. So you can see as a result of this, the work for RF and microwave circuit designers are definitely not getting any easier. Now, during the past years, our customers, the circuit designers, have been telling us on their needs when using 3D EM simulators. They share difficulties with us when they perform EM circuit co-simulation that is so crucial for successfully completing their design of MIMIC, RF modules, and RF PCBs. And based on their needs and feedback, we have created RF Pro a great EM circuit co-simulation environment that is tightly integrated in ADS. And it enables easy access to EM analysis by RF and microwave circuit designers whenever they need it during design. So RF Pro addresses three common requests from designers. One, no layout modification. You don't change your layout. No cookie cutting when you do EM analysis. Two, automatic and correct setup of EM analysis to produce results that can be trusted with confidence. And three, tight integration with circuit design simulators in ADS and Cadence Virtuoso with the same and identical environment to access the FEM or Momentum EM solvers. So, I thought the best way to show you RF Pro is to show five short demos on different applications with the most often encountered difficulties in setting up and performing EM circuit code simulation and show you how it is solved by the RF Pro EM simulation environment. So let's do it. So demo one is just a quick introduction just to illustrate to you how quickly and easily it is to set up EM simulation on a MIMIC power amplifier. Okay, in this short demo, I would like to show you how to quickly set up and EM simulate your design with RF Pro. From the layout page, RF Pro is launched from the tools menu. RF Pro automatically assembles the entire design, including its pins and components. Components with circuit models like FETs and SMT devices are usually represented with circuit models and do not require EM simulation. So by dragging the components down in the analysis section allows RF Pro to combine and co-simulate these circuit models with the EM simulation results of the layout. Similarly, by dragging all the design pins down in the analysis section, allow RF Pro to automatically create a port for each pin with a reference ground that is closest to the pin. Here in the option tab, I set the simulation frequencies and I select 
the EM simulator. In this case, I chose the Momentum microwave engine. Next, I run the simulation. And once it's done, I can immediately view the results such as S parameters of the EM simulation. I can also create test benches for ADS that automatically combine the EM co-simulation results of the circuit models with the EM simulation results on the layout. So in ADS, I open the top level schematic page and from there I can shift views and simulate both my original circuit level design with circuit models as shown here or I can shift the view to the EM model from RF Pro and simulate it and see how my simulation results have changed. I can even keep the simulation results in the memory by turning the history on and be able to display both results on the same plot for better viewing of the change in the results from both views, circuit versus EM, as shown here. And this is all to it. Now, to put the next demo in context, remember earlier we discussed the industry trend of higher integration into smaller size? What you see here is an example of an RFPA switch module with multiple ICs, passives, wire bonds, solder bumps, and laminate substrate all integrated into a multi-technology RF module. If you are the designer, you will have to know if everything is going to work together before you sign off on building the hardware. So in demo 2, I want to show you how to conveniently assemble a multi-technology module using the drag and drop smart mount capability in ADS and simulate it using RF Pro 3D FEM simulator. Please pay attention to how quickly you can set up and run an EM circuit co-simulation without any manual reconnection errors. In this short demo, I demonstrate the use of smart mount technology in ADS to mount a mimic power amplifier onto a QFN package and bond wire it. Then I use RF Pro in ADS to quickly EM setup and EM simulate this whole multi-technology module. Let me show you how I do this. First, I start a new workspace as shown here. Then I import both design libraries into this new workspace, the Mimic Power Amplifier design library and the QFN package design library. Next, I create a new layout, let's call it module assembly layout, and I place all of the module components in it as shown here. Here you can see the whole module assembled together, the package, the Mimic PA, and the bond wires. How did I do this is very simple. First, I drag and insert the package onto the layout page. And then I drag and insert the Mimic power amplifier on top of the package. Then I insert the bond wires from the insert menu. It's really straightforward and simple as shown here. Now, uh, please notice in the P-cell customization of the Mimic PA, notice I select the artwork type to be smart mount with bottom mount configuration. This means when I insert the Mimic power amplifier onto the package, it will sit on the package facing up, not flipped. Next, to perform EM setup and EM simulation, I launch RF Pro from the Tools menu. RF Pro automatically assembles the entire design, including its pins and components. Components with circuit models like FETs, like SMT components, are usually represented with circuit models and do not require EM simulation. So by dragging the components down into the analysis section allows RF Pro to combine and co-simulate these circuit models, namely the FETs here, 
with the EM simulation results of the entire physical structure. Similarly, by dragging all the design pins down in the analysis section allows RF Pro to automatically create a port for each pin with a reference ground that is closest to the pin. In the Option tab, I select the simulation frequencies and the type of EM simulation I want to use. Here I select the 3D FEM simulator for my entire 3D module structure. Next, I run the simulation, and once it's complete, I can immediately view the EM simulation S parameter results in RF Pro. I can also quickly create a test bench and an EM model subcircuit cell to be used in ADS for further analysis and data display in ADS. And here you can see in ADS, I can use that EM subcircuit model that came from RF Pro in a test bench and simulate the whole module and compare it with the Mimic PA simulation standalone. This way I can see the overall effect of the package and bond wires on the whole structure. So next, let's see what impact the industry trend towards millimeter wave frequency applications, such as 5G, automotive radars, and YGIG, has on packaging. You see, at millimeter wave frequencies, losses and parasitic of bond wires become excessive, and wafer-level packaging is required to integrate multi-technology RF modules. So in the next demo, I will show you how to assemble and route interconnects with interactive design rule check through a wafer level package and then EM simulate selected nets without modifying the layout. In this demo, I would like to show you how you can extract any critical path or nets in your design and have RF Pro efficiently analyze them with EM circuit co-simulation and without any layout modification or cookie cutting. Let me show you how. The RF module and interconnect routing I'm using here consist of a silicon-based RF transceiver chip and a gallium arsenide filter, a multi-technology assembly on a fan-out wafer level package. The transceiver IC is flipped and placed on top of a fan-in redistribution process layer, we call RDL, and connected with solder bolts and routed through a fan-out multi-layer wafer level package. Now one reason for the solder bolts connection is to reduce or eliminate the high loss and parasitic associated with traditional bond wires connections especially in higher frequency application. But notice here, I used on the other IC chip, which is the gas gallium arsenide filter IC, it has bond wires connection. I used bond wires here just to illustrate to you the richness of mixed multi-technologies assembly and simulation in ADS. So here's a picture of the final assembly. Now, let me demo this in ADS and RF Pro. Here's the workspace in ADS. First, let me open the transceiver IC padring layout, which is basically the footprint of the transceiver chip, and it has all the external connection pins. For example, here are the differential output pins of the PA in the transceiver. Please pay attention to this gap or the space between the pins on the right side of the pad ring. But this pad ring will be sitting on top of a redistribution layer, RDL. And notice the RDL has its gap on the left side, as shown here. But because the IC pad ring is configured to be mounted as flip chip, the gap on each one of them, when assembled together, will perfectly align. Here you can see in the P-cell customization of the IC pad ring, the layout is set to smart mount flip chip as shown here. So now, when I mount the IC onto the RDL, it should align properly. 
because the IC has been flipped, as you see here. Next, from the main window, let me now open the fanout wafer level package schematic and layout views. At the right side panel of the layout page, the differences window is showing that this page is still missing the IC and RDL designs. So as you see here, I can easily drag them in and place them at the middle and on top of the wafer level package as shown here. The flight lines you see here will help guide me on where the interconnects must go in order to match with the schematic. So now I will use trace routing in order to perform the connections. Notice the routing also has automatic collision avoidance. This prevents lines on the same layer to collide or short and also help avoid breaking any DRC rules. To save time, let me now open the completed routed module. And here it is. All the pins have been connected and the module is now completely routed and ready for EM analysis with RF Pro. Now, let me launch RF Pro from the tools menu. In this demo, I want to perform a user-defined analysis on the interconnect routing between the output nodes of the power amplifier and the input nodes of the filter. To do that, I simply select the interconnect nets between the PA and the filter and move them down into the user-defined analysis section as shown here. Let me switch to wireframe visibility mode for better viewing. And here you can now see the two interconnects that I would like to analyze and check for their impedance match and insertion loss. The two nets names are highlighted on the interconnects coming from the PA output nodes. Next, in the Options tab, I define the simulation frequencies and I select the type of EM analysis. In my case, I chose the 3D Generation 2 FEM simulator. Next, I would go ahead and run the simulation. And I have already performed the simulation run for you and I wanted to show you the summary page. You can see it took close to two minutes to complete the simulation on my laptop. Now let's look at the results. You can immediately view the S parameters results by clicking on it in the results tab. Here I'm plotting the input and output return loss, S11, S22, S33, and S44 of the four nodes of the two interconnects so we can see how good the impedance match is. And it shows here that we have better than 15 dB return loss at 2 GHz. Next, I want to display the S21 and S43, which are the insertion loss of the interconnects. And here they are. So you can see the loss of these two lines are shown to be less than 0.4 dB at 2 GHz. This is important because we don't want these lines to have a higher loss than required, since any additional loss would take away expensive power from the PA output and reduce it. I hope you have enjoyed watching this demo. But please, I want you to remember that these user-defined analysis of critical nets or sections in your layout are done without having to modify the layout or cookie cut it. It is all done by selecting the nets and moving them down in the analysis section of RF Pro, as I have just shown. So in the next segment, I would like to show and demo circuit EM excitation and co-simulation in ADS. I will apply this technique on this 5G transmit module interfacing a 4x4 patch antenna. You see, 5G design brings lots of challenges, especially when combining and simulating high-frequency circuit design elements of multiple manufacturing technologies with different model abstractions, including physical EM models. Now, one very important design challenge in 5G is the dynamic impedance between the PA and the antenna. 
You see, as the scan angle changes, the energy in the array elements change, and that causes the impedance between the power amplifiers and the antenna dynamically change. As a result of this, a loss of transmit power happens, and under certain conditions, this reduction of power could be large enough to lose the signal and create what is called a blind spot. Here at the right side, I'm showing an excerpt from Dr. Neil Tucker's technical note, which graphically shows how the coupling between the array elements affect and change the impedance. Let me briefly illustrate this to you. For simplicity, let me first represent all 16 antenna ports as 50 ohm loads. You see there is no coupling between the patches, and all PAs are identical. Therefore, the PA output impedance and power are constant as the phase angle is swept from minus 60 to plus 60 degrees. Let me now use 16 random resistive loads between 40 and 62 ohms. Again, as you can see here, the impedance and output power are constant as we sweep the phase shift angle between minus 60 degrees to plus 60 degrees. Next, let me represent the 16 loads as complex loads extracted from the actual S parameters of the antenna at 28 gigahertz. But keep in mind, I'm still not including EM coupling from the patches, and the results still shows a non-varying impedance with the change in phase angle between minus 60 and plus 60 degrees. But now watch this. When I include the actual antenna EM simulation, including the coupling between all patches, look at the results. Look how the impedance at the output of the PA interfacing the antenna is dynamically changing with the change in the phase angle. And that is due to the coupling effect between the patches which dynamically changes the impedance as we change the scan angle. As I said earlier, this dynamic impedance could result in reduction of output transmit power, and it could be significant and cause a blind spot, which is a very important issue in the design of 5G systems. To recap, the circuit EM excitation and co-simulation process in ADS allows you to combine and co-simulate this transmit chain with all its components along with the antenna EM simulation and deliver accurate simulation results of the whole system and all its components, including nonlinearities with harmonic balance simulator and also memory effects with circuit envelope simulation. So what you see here is the transceiver components on the schematic page and they are all designed at the circuit level using foundry design kit models or they could be represented by their S parameter models or nonlinear X parameter models or EM models. And the output of such circuit simulation on the transmit chain drives and excites the physical antenna structure that's being simultaneously co-simulated with momentum planar EM solver or with a full 3D FEM solver in RF Pro. Now the output of all this at the far right comprises the complete circuit EM co-simulated results produced by capturing the excitation from the transmitter module and applying it directly to the antenna, all simulated simultaneously. Let me now demo this valuable simulation and analysis method and show you how it works with RF Pro. Okay, in this short demo, I would like to illustrate to you how to perform EM circuit excitation in RF Pro. Here I have a 5G beam steering transmit chain that is interfacing a 4x4 patch antenna. The phase shifter angle in the transmit chain is swept by increments of 31 degrees using circuit simulation. And this swept results from the transmitter drive the antenna which is EM simulated in RF Pro. Let me show you how to do this. First, we start with the antenna layout and launch RF Pro from the Tools menu. 
In RF Pro, I select to simulate my structure with Momentum Microwave Simulator. In the Frequency Plans tab, I input the simulation frequencies. Notice that you must include the frequencies that will be used in the far field view and we must save them in the memory using the Field Storage tab. Once the simulation is completed, RF Pro generates a sub-circuit EM model to use in ADS as shown here. If you push into the symbol, you can see the generated sub-circuit with the antenna EM model. So now, let's simulate the transmit chain in ADS interfacing the antenna EM model. You can see the simulation runs and the phase angle of the phase shifter is swept by increments of 31 degrees. The simulation results here will be saved in a data set that can be accessed in RF Pro to view the overall circuit EM co-simulation far field views. So now, in the RF Pro page, select far field, select type of excitation to be circuit excitation, and browse and select the ADS simulation dataset that contains the circuit simulation of the transmit chain with swept phase angle. Next, select the frequency of choice. Here it is 28 GHz. And here we go. We see the antenna beam that can be steered with the phase shifter swept angle with increments of 31 degrees. Similarly, we can view the antenna current density that is generated from various swept angles in the phase shifter, as shown here. And, of course, you can plot the antenna port's S parameters in the RF Pro results panel, as shown here. And this is it. This is how you perform EM circuit excitation in RF Pro. Okay, now let's move on to do one more demo on EM circuit co-simulation with RF Pro. But this time, I'm going to show you how to tune the circuit components with RF Pro. Now, I wanted to quickly share with you the SMD circuit model's tuning feature in RF Pro. I want to run RF Pro simulation on this two-stage RF board low noise amplifier with many SMD components all connected with interconnect lines. So just as I have shown you in the previous four demos, RF Pro would perform the EM and circuit co-simulation and include the parasitic and coupling effects of interconnects on the board, while at the same time it combines the circuit models of all the surface mount components and generate an EM model to use and display the overall results in ADS. And here at the bottom is the original schematic without the interconnects. It contains only the wired SMD components. So let me simulate both test benches to see the effect of the interconnect lines parasitic and coupling. And here you can see how the response has changed and shifted in frequency due to the effects of the interconnect lines. But what's nice now is by launching the tuner, I can tune all the components to new values and watch my response move. I can keep doing this until I bring back the response to meet the specifications that I'm seeking. And this is all to it. Okay, so in summary, with RF Pro, you can now easily EM simulate any portion of your design, may it be RFIC, MIMIC, RF module, or RF PCB, without any layout modification. The automatic and correct setup of EM circuit co-simulation lets you account for parasitic effects and packages and interconnects during your circuit design whenever you need it. And because it's automatic expert EM analysis setup, RF Pro produces EM results you can trust, even when the EM experts are not around. 
So uh, before I close, I also wanted to point out to you two more interesting design cases that I strongly encourage you to, to read, to see. Uh, you can find them in the RF Pro application page, uh, which is in the resource panel for you. The first example shown on the lower left corner in pink is on a mixed signal PCB board with an RF section that was imported and simulated with RF Pro. This is a digital TV tuner board from an Italian company, Seiko, who has kindly shared their design methodology with us. See, the PCB ODB++ file was imported into ADS. RF Pro automatic net and component extraction was used to pick out the RF section and adjacent digital line for EM analysis of possible digital noise coupling. No layout modification or cookie cutting was needed. This is shown in the lower left corner, as I, sh I, as I told you, and I really encourage you to take a look at it in the RF Pro application page, uh, which is given to you in the resources. Okay, the second example, which is shown at the bottom right corner, is on the next generation wireless networking module with integrated antenna working at 60 gigahertz. This module was jointly designed and built by Fraunhofer Institute in Germany and Global Foundries. Please read about it in the application page in RF Pro, which is given to you in the resources. Okay, so this takes us to the end of this session, and thank you so much for attending. I hope you have learned a more efficient and error-free method to do EM circuit co-simulation in your RF and microwave circuit design. Uh, other than the resources listed on the panel for you, you can also Google Keysight RF Pro to learn more. So give RF Pro a try. You would love it. And thank you again for attending.